Let's get to some specifics. We, you talk about, and we base this on some of this on the Gallup data. Yeah. What are the different buckets of well-being that are addressed? Okay, so um, so we really stick to the criteria that the Gallup came up with in terms of defining well-being because it was you know based on so many uh, years of research. So the first one is purpose well-being. Um, purpose well-being is is work for the most part, but it's purpose, not work or career well-being, because sometimes there's, you know, a mother has a purpose or a farmer has a purpose. They're not necessarily going to some big building in New York City, right? Um, so uh, your career or your purpose has to do with whether you have an opportunity to use your gifts or your strengths every single day, right? Because we all are very unique. We want the opportunity to give back what we have innately to those gifts that we have. Um, and uh, your career well-being also has to do with that work environment. If you're really engaged in the work that you're doing, if you feel that you know your boss treats you more like a partner and not a subordinate, there's a lot of things that go into purpose. But well-being. ideally speaking, your job, your career, your calling should match. Right. right? Totally. Yes, okay. Exactly. So let's talk um, about the other buckets of well-being. Okay. So the second one is uh, social well-being. And um, social well-being has to do with uh, surrounding yourself, experiencing you know, a sense of love in your life. That can come from different sources. Um, your social well-being is affected through three degrees of separation. So the people that you surround yourself by is extremely, um, it impacts your well-being you know, like a, a ton. So you have to be really conscious of who you surround yourself with. Um, the other thing is that as humans, we want to be surrounded by people that help us learn and grow. You know, we're one of the things I think that makes us different as a species is the fact that we we not only want happiness, but we enjoy the pursuit of it, right? So we want to be developed. We want to be able to learn and grow from the people that we surround ourselves with. Um, so that's social well-being. That's the second. And these are in order. What's the third? <laughs> um, so the third is financial well-being. Mm-hmm. And that has to do with... Um, uh, so income only has an effect up until a certain point. Basically, after your basic needs are met, you know your your um, the amount of money that you have is mostly important for taking care of your basic needs. But after a certain level of income, other things are affecting your well being. Like you, if you're spending money on experiences or spending money on other people, um, financial well being also means that you are taking care of your money in an automated way so it's not actually on your mind or you not know having to worry about it. yeah because you know those thoughts are almost like physical right they can almost physically affect you um so that's your financial being and then uh, fourth community well uh fifth is community so fourth is physical well-being um which is interesting i think right because we focus so much on our physical health. I think that's occupying a lot of the conversations um, in the world right now, and yet it's fourth out of these five elements. But the way that physical well-being is defined is that you have enough energy to do what you want to do, which I think is interesting because there's no, there isn't like a set weight that you're supposed to have or a certain way that you're supposed to eat. It's there, there's a life, a certain kind of lifestyle that you want. Do you have the energy to, to do that? And then that means most likely that you should be healthy and exercise. So, you know, as I've looked at physical well-being and, you know, we've talked about physical well-being uh, in Super Brain, my book with Rudy, mm-hmm. and now in Super Genes, I think it boils down to some very simple principles. Sleep, mm-hmm. meditation and stress management, Exercise, for me, yoga and breathing, mm-hmm. uh, healthy emotions, and food. If you pay attention to this, I think you have all the energy you need. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have some questions to ask you about okay. that. Um, yeah. Because one of the things about food that I feel like is interesting is that we ingest it, but we're not very conscious, conscious. of it. Right. Then finally, then, community well-being. Yeah, so community well-being um, is... Sometimes that can be the difference between a good life and a great, great life. Um, and your community well-being is a combination of having satisfaction or taking pride in the actual place that you live. You know, so do you love New York City or is it just a place that you happen to 
grow up, you know, is it something that you actually take pride in? Do you see it as a place that's actually getting better? Um, and the other part is do you give your time to the community? Are you volunteering in some way? But a part of that that I find really interesting is that how you give your time and to what is really important. So, um, you know, I'm a cancer survivor. I had, if I had the option to volunteer at a, um, at say a soup kitchen or be a make a wish grantor, me being a make a wish grantor because I was a receiver of make a wish boosts my well being a lot more because it's something that is more attached to my, yeah, identity. So that's important for people because especially if you're not in a job that you love, another way for you to express your your inner gifts or your talents would be to give back, but not just give of your time, give a part of yourself that has meaning. So find an organization that is very aligned with your passion. So, and yeah, there's some CEOs watching.